Hello, so in this video I'm painting the same image digitally multiple times to compare three digital painting software. One of them is Photoshop, the other one is TV Paint and the other one is Clip Studio Paint. Um, I'm doing this because there's something about each of these programs that I like um, to use for one reason or another, but for example, now with Photoshop, I'm noticing and I've always kind of sort of knew or did that knew this, that you can't really have a hard round brush as good as Photoshop, from what I've seen. Like, even if I like the UI or stuff from other programs, I feel like Photoshop's hard round, or the equivalent, like the hard shock brush, just goes from um, the zero to whatever many pressure levels your tablet has, like zero to 2000 or something like that. Uh, it just takes the most advantage out of all of those. And uh, with something like Chalk Rush, you can, before even lifting your stylus of of your tablet, you can already be building a lot of, um, essentially a lot of blocking, right? The values from one to another to create forms that you then iterate upon. And Photoshop is amazing for that. Um, and, uh, you know, Photoshop also has... The, the ability to press F and go full screen and you can call forth your brushes and even colors with the press of a button. Clip Studio doesn't really do that, for example. So that's really useful if you want to, to work on larger images or want to get rid of the UI, which is a good thing because I don't like Photoshop's UI and I've been trying to get away from Adobe project uh, products in general um, because essentially I you know, the whole product as a service. I, I, I'm never I'm not subscribing to the Adobe Cloud or anything like that. Especially since I actually prefer older versions of Photoshop, like the CS6 you're seeing. But then, you know, it, it might not be compatible with a lot of other Photoshop files someone sends to me or stuff like that. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I've just been trying to move on from Adobe. And I, I don't like, yeah, I don't like Photoshop's UI that much. <laughs> You have... I, I had to install that color wheel thing separately because it didn't have a good one in the first place. And I hate that I have, always have to create um, a canvas every time I open it. Like, I, I want to open and start drawing immediately. In Photoshop I have to create, you know, essentially write the, the amount of pixels for the canvas that I want to create because uh, they're, they're normal, uh, they're international... what do you call it? The, the default sizes are trash and all that and then you have to erase the background layer always erase the background layer which for some reason it's like a separate locked layer there's all these all these menial things you have to do with Photoshop I feel to even get started and you know as, as I try other art software I, I start to notice the, the delay between thinking something and actually drawing that Photoshop is but when you're actually in the zone, then yeah, I don't think there's replacing Photoshop, especially when you take in consideration the, the photo editing capacities. Um, but you know, there's quicker ways to do certain things. There's there's programs that do stuff like masking better, or at least faster, or get to you know get other pros and cons. Like Photoshop, for example, is terrible. Now you're not seeing it here because it's a painting, but it, Photoshop is terrible for line work. Everything that I said that's good about the Photoshop hard round, I'm talking about in opacity, not not in from thin to thick. I don't know why, but ju that's just the way it is. Other than that, yeah, Photoshop kind of still reigns supreme, even if I'm not a fan of using it day to day. Okay, so this is... let me see. Okay, this is TV Paint. Now, TV Paint is my favorite program to animate, draw, and paint in. So it's probably my favorite art software ever. Um, however, it has some problems that does not permit me to use it all the time. So one of the cool things about TV Paint is that it's incredibly customizable. Uh, the UI you're seeing now, I customize it myself um, to, to look like an illustration program instead of an animation one. Essentially putting the layers to the side instead of below like a timeline, right? So you can perfectly make that and work it as its own fully paint paintable Illustrator software, essentially. Um, uh, and that's really cool, and the brush engine is amazing. I made hundreds of brushes that you're seeing, uh, me using right now. Uh, I also 
you, you can import your own palette like I'm picking colors from a small palette on the the right there uh, that's essentially like a painter's palette right it's all the colors next to each other and that's really good for me because I'm partially colorblind it's difficult for me to know exactly which color I'm picking once I see like a color wheel or you know anything like that but when you put, lay it out like a in a palette like that then I start seeing a lot of relations and it's easier for me to pick from that um, so that's really cool uh, and yes this image is referenced if anyone knows the model because I, I, I for some reason Google reverse image search can no longer find me anything but I just have a folder filled with references uh, from literally almost 10 years ago uh, from then <laughs> that's I don't know the origin of each of those pictures there's thousands and thousands I'm sorry I don't know this model if you know just tell me I'll post any something on the description uh, but yeah the TV paint is really dope to just open there's already a blank page there waiting for you to draw in super responsive uh, even if you make your canvas big I feel um, not as big as like 20k or something something like that but Considering it's an animation program, you'd be surprised. But, however, it falls apart in one thing, that for a painting, if you're doing like a full painting, it's, it kind of matters. And it's, um, you know, okay, so, if you start zooming in, for example, in a certain place, you'll probably start seeing that it's as if the color range for the program is not as big as something like Photoshop or other painting programs. What I mean is, imagine you do like a gradient, right? Um, and the Photoshop gradient goes from re value of 0 to value of 800. And if you do the exact same thing, with the exact same colors on each end on TV Paint, you only go from 0 to 80. Because, and you start noticing the jump from one value to another. So if you zoom in in a painting that you've been doing, you'll start seeing that it's not really smooth from one place to another. There's like this these color webs and that's kind of bad it makes it it, it kind of um, kind of not the takes the quality away from the image like how, how much it could be and all that um, and it's difficult if you want to do some finer details or anything of the sorts or may create a, a small contrast from a color to another essentially and and that kind of sucks but worse even than that is that the way TV Paint works, the brushes, uh, is that it doesn't really have an opacity setting. I mean, it does, it's called the opacity setting, but it's not real opacity. It's actually closer to the flow setting from Photoshop, even though it's also not really that. Essentially, TV Paint uses a really weird system in its brushes where there's like this, um, the wetness value, that's, it's essentially a curve that you can edit yourself, uh, but the, I, it's just this it deserves its own video. It's too complicated to just talk about it. Uh, however, it um, essentially mess up with that. But the results are never, never the hard round Photoshop brush. Like you going from the value zero to one, like, like Photoshop does. It just doesn't do that. It's like, uh, like I said, it's closer to the flow where it's it's repeating its pattern more or less and closer to each other. It's, but it's also not really that. It's difficult to explain the wetness value. Anyway, there there is technically a hard round brush in TV Paint uh, with the pen, and it's called the, the actual opacity, the closest thing to opacity. It's called power, the power setting. Um, but you're locked into the the the, the normal, just a circle. You're essentially, you're locked into the regular brush tip of a circle, which is kind of bad for TV Paint because you know. The brushes, the brush engine is amazing. You want to try out different things, and even then, even with that one hard, hard round, uh, quote unquote, it's still not as good. Nowhere near as good as Photoshop. So that's kind of my struggle with my favorite program to use, but it has all these things that don't allow me to do a full painting in it if I want anything good. So here, here was my solution, and that's what you're seeing now. It's um, <laughs> it's buying Clip Studio Paint when it was on massive discounts. I, I got the the strongest version. I think it's the X Clip Studio X, and the yeah, I, I spent a uh, hundred euros almost on this or something. And so far, I hate to say it, but I don't think it was worth it. So, the what made me jump into finally getting this was oh, they're taking Photoshop brushes, right? And so oh shit, I have a ton of Photoshop brushes. That's awesome. 
Um, and then I got it and I imported all my Photoshop brushes. And you know, they work similarly to Photoshop, but I still cannot feel that that smooth, that precise, hard round Photoshop brush. It's still not zero to one, to, to the 800 whatever values you, you feel in Photoshop. It's still not that input from your pen. However, it does... Clip Studio Paint does have really good line work for its brushes, so that is a plus. However, the minus for Clip Studio is that the the lack of uh, customization, essentially. Wait, what do you, what do you mean it lacks? The, the UI, for example, you're kind of locked into this. That big bar on the right, like I, that was my preferred way to work because I can focus only on one side, but. You just kind of have that. If you want to hide it, you also hide it, hide all your brush tools and all of that. You can't call a menu either by dragging or floating or anything like that, kind of like Photoshop and even TV Paint can do in a way or another. So you're just kind of locked into this tool set, into this UI. And that's really bad in my opinion. You can't never, never just fully, uh, you know, have your image take over the screen. And uh, not getting into that sense of flow is kind of bad. Another thing that you can change, really, is a lot of shortcuts are kind of unchangeable. Like, I have to use uh, the upper, yeah, the, the upper button on my stylus to color pick. And after a while, that hurts my, <laughs> my finger. Um, when the other programs, I can use the lower one. And yeah, I, I, I could change everything specifically to Clip Studio. Um, to be the, the lower one, like go into my tablet settings and all that. But considering I use the other other programs also, and I wanted to be that, the fact that the program uh, doesn't allow me to change it into something else, and I'm forced into that, um, it, it, it just kind of sucks. Uh, another thing that I... Yeah, something... Yeah, yeah kind of just the, the UI... The brushes, not you know, being able to import Photoshop brushes, but uh, not and still not being as good. Just demonstrating kind of the superior uh, way of painting that Photoshop has. At least I feel it. Don't take my word for it, but I definitely feel a, a difference. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I definitely feel a difference between Photoshop and Clip Studio. And the, the other thing I want to say is that there's something about when you leave Clip Studio on for long. Like when you're using it for a while, or don't use it and leave it on the, the background or something, and you come back to it, then it starts lagging. I don't know why, but you like do a stroke, and it takes forever to get to the other side. I was doing an illustration, and I ha actually had to stop and do it in TV Paint. for some. And on, uh, yeah, yeah, that's another thing, high resolutions also seem to do that. So I was forced to use TV Paint <laughs> to do the line work for... An illustration, essentially, because Clip Studio was just lagging so much on, like, a 4K plus thing. Every line was taking forever, and I was like, okay, I'd be, the, I'd be done with this image if I was doing it in another software. So, I, I don't know if the hype about around this program is really, um, is really worth it. I think they're trying, people are trying to... You know, replace Adobe at all costs. And, you know, so am I, but in, uh, sometimes the answer for that is just older Adobe stuff. Uh, that was not, no, you know, just um, bad. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and, and then there's still on other programs like Krita that can do that for you with no price of admission. So that's, that's way better, I feel, at least to try out. Uh, and uh, pretty much the only thing that I've been using Clip Studio for the most part is the AI coloring scheme, but I think a lot of more programs will have that in the future. I don't know. So in the end, in the end, I um, you know, Photoshop is probably the king for painting. TV Paint is my favorite to use, so I'm probably gonna use that even if it's not as good, <laughs> just a lot. And Clip Studio, I just. I don't really have a reason to use it. Like I, I have to find. I've been trying to find reasons myself to to try and use it. Maybe like I'll try it more things on it. Try seeing it what what it can offer to me. 
without me changing the way I work just to meet those programs, like demands, I guess. But so far, yeah, it's by far my least favorite. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's been it. That's the same painting three times. Maybe I'll, as I'm saying this, there's they're all three side by side or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, or one after another. Whatever. Bye.